Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Joe Brown. Well, I don't know you were hiding behind there. You got a bound on it. <laughs> that, that way people think you're still young. Well, he said, when I came on, he said, you made an entrance, but you made an entrance too. Oh, yeah, too, but I meant on the tube when you did the coming oh, out of the oh, gate. I thought you meant the entrance when I made came no. in then. Yeah, well, that as well. It was my very God, pretty. I didn't know what he was talking about. I'm terribly sorry. I do apologize. I'm just, being, I'm just <laughs> looking at your tour list. It seems you've got about two weeks off and a gruelling schedule. Yeah, you know, I love it. I'm a ham. Does, oh, does it take you back to the old days of touring? Well, it's much better. It's much better these days because we get paid. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's lovely because I just do mainly small theatres now. I don't really like them to do the nightclubs too much, yeah. you know, uh, being third on the bill to the booze and the birds, you know what I mean? <laughs> but when you go to a theatre, they, uh, they, they come along to see you and it's wonderful. Yeah. You know, you, you finish up talking to them as opposed to at them, you know, like you do in a nightclub. And there's a lot of small theatres now that have opened up around the country. Just uh, every little town's got its own theatre, you know, five, six hundred seat of theatre. But um, occasionally I do the big tour. I do these big tours with my old mate Marty, Marty Wild. Yeah. I've got one starting in September this year with um, 73 consecutive nights, <laughs> <laughs> which is quite a lot, but it's a happy tour and yeah. great people on the show, you know, so we have a good time. Yeah. Well, you obviously love it. Who were your, uh, your great influences when you were starting out? Well, I, I started as a guitar player and uh, I used to listen to people like Arthur Guitar Boogie Smith, who did Guitar Boogie before my old mate Bert got his hands on it, you know. <laughs> and of course, I love Django Reinhardt. Mm. But the rock and roll guitar players, guys like Eddie Cochran, and uh, he, he was a good player, yeah. Eddie Cochran. Well, he and Gene Vincent were great friends of yours, weren't they? Yeah, well, they, yeah, you see, what happened, I was on this pop show called Boy Meets Girls, which was the follow-up to the Old Boy Show, which was a big pop show of the time. And uh, the, when the Americans came over here to promote their stuff, they weren't allowed to bring their own musicians because of the union rules. So we got to play with them on the TV show. And as we were the only guys they came into contact with, I also got to go on tour with them. And well, that was a laugh, you know. I'm very well. It was great. <laughs> Joe's Jer one of the survivors in showbiz. There's so many yeah. people, you mentioned names, now, they've fallen by the wayside, and there are a few people survive, and he's one of the great survivors. Well, the you're still is, doing similar stuff, but you're, yeah. you've adapted it to a suit the, the uh, different audience. Yeah. yeah, the thing is about that is that I've always honestly believed that when you get an audience that comes to see you, you've got to be enjoying yourself. It's really important for you to enjoy yourself because, you know, you hear that some people say, oh, they're, you don't go out there tonight, they're thick, they don't, oh, they're not laughing at any of your jokes, they're stupid, just get your money and go home. And I've never had that attitude because I don't believe it. Because I believe when you see guys like Bud Flanagan who work in, who was a great hero of mine, Bud walked from the wings to the mic and he was in love with a guy before he'd even opened his mouth because, it, that feeling come off of him. And with me, the reason I've done so many different things in my career is because I've got fed up with something and I'm not enjoying doing it anymore. And that is the time to quit and do something else. Yeah, were you fed up with music? Because you, you moved, Never. what seemed suddenly uh, you moved to the stage and the screen. Well, you know, I, I did, I, I've been very lucky. I've had some good opportunities and I work with some wonderful people. Uh, the thing, the important thing is to try and learn something off of them. You know, and but I've never been fed up with music, not at all. I love my guitar and I love my music, and I always come back to it. I think I'm happier now doing what I'm doing than I've ever been. Did you find it easy doing stage work? Uh, yeah, acting work. Well, acting actually, as Nicholas will tell you, the basis of acting is the same as the basis of doing a, a show is to get everything right. And when I go to do my show, I've got a great sound system, I've got a great band. We get there at five o'clock, we do our sound check religiously and we go onto the stage, we make sure all our wires are working and we go on the stage and it's, anybody can do that. It's a professional attitude to get there, set yourself up. If you've got a modicum of, of talent, then that is the cream on the cake. And it's the same with acting. Learn the words. You speak to learn any actor. Job. Learn, learn, learn job. the words. It's Go really, along and learn the words. The Anything it, else yeah. that happens is yeah. bunt. Yeah. You know. But one of your big things was uh, appearing in Charlie Girl with Anna Neagle. Yeah. I mean, was that rather daunting? Appearing well, starring in the West it End? wasn't, it wasn't. You see, the thing about Charlie Girl was that uh, it's funny how the press never really picked up on it in a big way, but I'd done pantomimes before. And Charlie Girl was Cinderella. 
even down to the names. I mean, my character's name, and it was Joe Studholm, which was Studs, which was Buttons, right? The love interest was a man, his name was Jack Prince, right? He was the <laughs> prince. Then you had the two pretty sisters with the ugly minds. You had Charlie Girl, who was Cinderella, and Anna Neagle, dear Anna's part, was Lady Hadwell, <laughs> which of course is Baron Hard up, you know. So it really, it was a posh panto. Yeah. You, you were in Charlie Girl. Were you, I was in were Charlie you at the same time? He Charlie. was in Charlie Girl on roller skates. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you said earlier on I like to do something different, have a gimmick, and I remember saying to the producer, I said, uh, I, I, I played, uh, I first put on the roller skates when I was playing Dame in pantomime. I became a skating dame. And, um, they're the worst. And, they're, <laughs> <laughs> and it worked so well. I said it to Harold Fielding's for Indian. Um, well, it wasn't to him, it was the producer. I said, would you like me to do that scene on roller skates? He said, it would be a great gimmick. It was a scene where they were all doing the, um, the waltz at a, a big party, you see. Yeah. And I was pretending to be the butler because I wanted to get familiar with one of the girls. So I came on with a tray of uh, champagne on my roller skates. And I skated in between the dancers saying, champagne, anyone for champagne, anyone for champagne. And it was damn difficult because you do this and, uh, and half of them didn't realize it's you know it's quite difficult to do a turn and a, and a, and a stage is raked so if I face the audience I'm automatically going like that and then you had to skate up stage. The wonderful <laughs> thing about that Charlie Girl show was that they asked me Paul Nicholas did it they, they rehashed it 25 years after I did it and Paul Nicholas did it and he had some previous TV commitments mm, that he couldn't right. get out of so the Harold Fielding office asked me if I would do it and it's a very professional office Harold Fielding's office and when I went to see the show, uh, you know, this is 25 years after I did it, I noticed that all the extra lines that I put in there, uh, Paul Nicholas was doing these lines and a lot of it was gobbledygook and he didn't understand what it was all about. So he was speaking these lines and not getting laughs on them. So there was a thing in it, on one of my pantomimes, I worked with a wonderful dame called George Bolton and we're up the, uh, we do our little scene at the front mic and then as we start walking off together, he starts talking to me and he's going, Here's your puppy, up goes the I'm going, Here we go. He's talking, up, gibbering away like that. And I got to the side of the stage and I said to him, What's all that about, George? That's not in the script. He said, My boy, keep talking. Whatever you do, keep talking. I said, Why? Is it because they think they're getting their money? <laughs> <laughs> so he had this line in there, uh, Paul Nicholas, when Lady Hadwell says something to him, Anna Eagle said something to him, or in this case it was uh, Sid Charisse. Sid Charisse. And I, I put yeah. this thing in, yeah. which is a load of gobbledygook, which went, uh, she said, Joe, uh, would you go and do so and so? And I said, no sooner are some granted, up goes the brush, down comes a soot, six, nine and above, all jelly takes a wrinkles out your auntie Nelly. What can't speak, can't lie. You see? <laughs> and they all laughed, you know, and she just went, oh dear, you know. But now when I saw it, he said, he said no sooner are some granted, up goes the brush, down comes the soot. Six, nine and a bob, all jelly takes the wrinkles out your auntie. He didn't know why he was saying it. <laughs> when I did it, he got a big laugh. You know. He hasn't lost the cockney chirping. Uh, I know the chirping. Is there. But one of my great pleasures, which is a personal one, in taking over that part when it was revived with uh, Sid Charisse and, uh, and dear Dora Bryan and, uh, and Paul Nicholas, who was playing in And the don't forget Jeffers. Mark Winter. I thought and he Mark was Winter, great in He was show, great as yeah. a prince. But I actually played played the role that Derek uh, Nimmo played 20 years previously, <laughs> and there was, he made these jokes about my age on just a minute, and now I was playing the role 20 years later, because I was young enough to play the part, because he wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> and I used to say that oh, to him regularly, yeah, but it was yeah. great fun. It was wonderful when Joe came in, because we had yeah, such fun, you know, yeah. we're old mates. And, yeah. and it's wonderful to see your family, your, your son and daughter in the business. Oh, my, my girl Sam, she's yeah. a cracker. She's a great... She's uh, a cracker, yeah. Great yeah. singer, too. Yeah. She's a good singer, my <laughs> daughter. <laughs> And, and I've got two grandchildren as well. Lovely. Yeah. And so Peter's reco uh, producing records? Pete produces records. It's all in the family, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, do you know people say to me, are you, uh, are you worried about your kids going into show business? And I say, well, not a bit of it, really. I mean, you take a bloke like me, I've left school at 15, I've come from the east end of London, I've never seen anything, I probably never would. And here I am, I'm sitting here on your show, right next to him in a proper suit, <laughs> you know. And, uh, I mean, as a result of this business, I've seen the world, well, and I'm very well. happy. Joe, Nicholas, thank you both very much indeed. Time again. He's welcome. Thank you so much.